After over 40 years following their commission, certain murders haunt and still remain scalding to the touch. Their secrets and searing hot implications remain immune to in-depth public and media excavation. Feature films will not be financed. Memorials and reenactment for public consumption are non-existence. The killings are simply too lethal to the touch. The most disturbing series of San Francisco homicides in the 1970s were undisputably the zebra murders. Two principal reasons still provoke outrage over the serial killings among those who choose to remember. The killers were exclusively racially motivated and a cover-up by law enforcement agencies masks the territorial extent and numbers of actual killings. Between August 1973 and April 1974, within San Francisco alone, 15 execution-style murders and 8 serious assaults with survivors were publicly documented. Police identified the case as the zebra killings after the special police radio Z-band they assigned for the investigation. The designation seemed equally appropriate given the racially motivated nature of the attacks. Each of the victims were Caucasian, with one exception, and all of the killers were African American. According to Clark Howard's 1979 book, Zebra, the killings were carefully planned and orchestrated. Howard's work has been acknowledged by numerous credible sources as the most definitive, thorough, and authoritative book on the murders. Using court records, police reports, witnesses, and interviews with the killers themselves, Howard was able to piece together the horrid details behind the murders and the unrelenting hatred that inspired the killers. Howard's book detailed the sobering criteria employed by the responsible cell group within the Nation of Islam that were designed solely towards the objective of murder. Howard described the vicious, sometimes impulsive, and universally coward nature of the attacks. The book introduced chilling confirmation that the California Attorney General's Office had compiled a list of 71 execution-style murders committed around the state, bearing the same characteristics of the zebra killings. Regardless of the exact toll, the heartlessness behind synchronized murder becomes sickening reading. What sort of monsters or organization could condone such depravity? It remains unimaginable to assume that only four individuals should bear the sole responsibility for such heinous behavior. Yet four insignificant foot soldiers ultimately did. Three remain in prison, one died in jail. They know secrets. None of the remaining three convicts have ever publicly asked forgiveness or expressed shame for their actions despite 40 years of incarceration. Were compassion and humanity possible emotions to accompany their simple blind obedience? Do they share any resentments towards bearing the punishment for the acts alone? Their superiors eluded public disclosure capture, and ultimately accountability. The most widely circulating rationalization then by authorities for downplaying the number of fatalities was to avoid widespread public panic and alarm. In truth, this underexposure potentially created more victims unknowingly vulnerable. It has been over four decades since the zebra killings. With the exception of Clark Howard's book, Little has been written since that has profoundly reevaluated the murders. San Francisco civic victim memorial ceremonies or remembrances have never been held. The 23 victims remain essentially published footnotes and forgotten. The primary buildings involved in the drama have been remodeled, sometimes renumbered, and their facades freshened. But layers of applied paint can never completely cover the stainage of murder. Not everyone has conveniently forgotten the terror and the carnage. A trail of human extermination leaves many witnesses and survivors within its wake. Their eyewitness stories have the capacity to preserve the indignity 
for generations. This criminal narrative may have temporarily disappeared from the mainstream media and public consciousness, but for many it will never remain buried. The callousness and evil behind the attacks remain a permanent scandal. The violence symbolize an unjustified affront against both humanity and public disclosure. One day, one of the convicted killers may tell their secrets as an act of conscience. One day, the stilled voices of the victims may be publicly remembered. One day, the responsible organization may admit their atrocity. For the present time, there is only silence. There appears little interest to penetrate deeper. But time has a way of revealing all. And this is a story that merits the light of day.